Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Ben Hales with Transform My Poker and today I am going to tackle the theme of multi-way flops. This is a theme we get a lot of questions about so I know that many of you out there are struggling um, in the way that you negotiate these specific types of flops. Um, and I don't think there's as much general poker strategy information out there in books, videos, strategy sites. Um, be because they're more difficult, it's more difficult to give general advice on such a complicated type of flop. When there's more opponents involved, there's more variables, the mathematics goes crazy, and we all struggle as well. We struggle with multi-way pots. It's not just you. Everyone finds them more difficult to negotiate. Um, and with that in mind, my advice on this video will be fairly simple and brief. I'm going to make a few general statements about multi-way flops, and then I'm going to give you some of the key uh, ways to think through the hands. But it won't be very, very specific. It will be fairly general. Okay? So what can we say about multi-way flops? First up, I'd like to reiterate that they are more complicated. You are going to have to think about hand ranges for all of your opponents. This could take considerably longer and combining the information is extremely challenging. It's, it's not easy to know what to do with all that information. Sometimes we're going to have far too much to think about. Um, this can create a headache situation and can confuse you. Remember, it's the same for everyone. Uh, it's a very complicated s spot that you're going to be in and do your best. You, you may not be able to work out all the mathematics involved. You may be struggling to process the information, but everybody else will be as well. So, you know, don't don't worry about the fact that it's, it's perhaps beyond our complete comprehension. Um, the, the time to tackle all of that side of things is off the table when you're when you've got the time to get your calculators out and work things out. When you're at the table, don't panic. Do the best that you can. Just be aware that these spots are very complicated. When you're playing in a multi-way flop, you are going to win less often, right? Obvious, I know. Um, if you've got four players in a pot, you theoretically are going to win one in four times. If you're heads up, it should be one in two times. I know, I know, very straightforward. But have you ever broken it down like that? Because sometimes we're just playing poker, we don't think about the obvious things. And I, uh, you know, I think you, you know you need to be aware that when you're in a multi-way flop, there's a greater risk in gambling because your opponents, there's much bigger risk that one of them's going to wake up with a good hand or that one of them knocks you off your hand. There is correspondingly more reward. So when you do win one of these flops, um, you take down a bigger pot. And whether it's through showdown or th by making people fold, there's more reward on offer. However, in general, you want to be trying to avoid multi-way flops. There are times when they're a good thing for you. Um, certain types of hand play well in multi-way flops. But in general, you want to be isolating, going heads up, being the aggressor, and giving yourself the opportunity to win pots more straightforwardly and to win more pots through non-showdown by making your opponents fold. In multi-way flops, you're generally going to find that bluffing doesn't work as well. And this is, again, for very, very obvious reasons. You've got more players who you've got to convince that you've got the best hand. You've got more players who may have a good hand themselves. So the chances that a bluff is going to work, the more opponents you've got, the less likely it is to work. So you, generally they require more honesty. Now, 
I, I'm never going to say that you should never bluff in a multi-way flop because there are spots where you can do just that. And against really good opponents, they'll tend to believe you more because multi-way flops require more honesty. So you get this double think, triple think going on um, as you go into deeper levels of thought. But in general, you want to be playing your hand a, a lot more straightforwardly in multi-way flop. So, um, you know, play the strength of your hand. Whereas in a heads up situation, you can be much more deceptive. Okay, I want to just expand slightly on one of the points that I made, and that was that we're going to win less often. And I want to break it down into showdown and non-showdown, as we should be doing with, you know, when we consider any hand in No Limit Hold'em, you know, how, how are we going to win money? Well, we're going to win through showdown, and we're going to win through non-showdown. Um, in multi-way flops, when we win through showdown, we need a better quality of hand. So one pair might not be good enough. Uh, we, we, well, that's always the case, of course, but in a, in a multi-way flop, it's more likely that we're going to require a flush or a straight or a full house. Um, wh whereas in a heads up pot, one pair is quite often going to win. And this is a really, really basic but important point to be understood. So your showdown hands are going to have to be better. And the other point is simply that when we bluff, it's not going to work as often. We may need to bet more with the bluff or the bluff may need to be a raise, you know, or a significant raise that um, that shocks our opponents into folding rather than just a small bluff, which is much, much less likely to work in a multi-way part. So it, it needs to be something substantial. Perhaps it needs to be uh, across two streets, a bluff, and it may need to be a larger bet size than normal. Um, it's, got, it's got to be significant in order to make multiple opponents fold. My final slide is going to be giving you four keys to success. Okay, these are very broad points, but I hope they help you. First of all, Drawing hands are the way forward for multi-way flops. In deep stack situations, at the beginning of big tournaments or in cash games, you're going to have deep stacks. This is when multi-way flops make more sense. You can get involved with suited hands, connected hands, suited aces, hands that have a high potential for uh, making a, a big pot obviously small pocket pairs, medium pocket pairs, hands that you're looking to flop big with. Secondly, understand your pot odds. Understand the risk reward ratio in gambling. The more you can get your head around that, the more likely you are to make smart decisions in multi-way flops. My third piece of advice is simply to play straightforward poker. So if you've got a good hand, bet for value. Don't complicate things. Try not to uh, pull out all your tricks in multi-way flops. It's probably gonna be the right thing to do to just play your cards straightforward manner. And on the same note, Try and avoid bluffing unless you're sure that it's a really good spot. And sometimes there are good spots in multi-way flops. But you want to be confident about when you're making this. There needs to be a high level of fold equity. And to be honest, that doesn't happen that often in multi-way flops. So try to avoid bluffing and be more straightforward. And they are your four keys to succeeding in multi-way flops. If you enjoyed this video, give it a Facebook like for me, add your comments and questions at the bottom. I will endeavor to get back to you. My name is Ben Hales with Transform My Poker. Thanks for watching.